That's the cheapest way to get into renting exotic cars. And it's also the single most profitable. All right, so the pandemic hit, I built my house, I put a gym in it, right? Because now you limit the excuses of not being able to go to the gym to work out, and it works. Now the other problem is I'm also getting old. So I start to experience muscle pain and joint pain where I didn't really do that as a kid because it was more like a rubber band. And that's where I discovered CBD CryoFreeze by Omax. And this stuff is great. It's a roll-on that is a pain relief roll-on. It makes life so much better. You get like this arctic blast within, I want to say 20 or 30 seconds. You roll it on and you just, you go numb, you feel good and it allows you to recover or even continue working out. And it's something definitely worth trying. Now it says CBD on it and you're thinking, oh, well, is that going to make me high? I don't smoke weed. I don't like weed. There's no THC in it. So you're not going to get high. You're not, you're just going to get pain relief, which is what you're looking for. So it's definitely worth trying out. I rely on it and you could probably use some too. If you want to give them a shot, click the link below in the description. It's going to bring you to the website. You're going to save 20% off site-wide by using promo code SSR. So click the link in the description, CBD Cryo Freeze by Omax. Give them a shot. All right, guys, Rob Ferretti here. And I just got back from Paris, France, which is fully open now. No more COVID, no more anything. Just like Iceland where I was last week, no more COVID, no more restrictions. Go travel and have a good time. This is not paid or has anything to do with being sponsored by traveling out of the United States. But if you want to do so, now is the time. So I was in Paris for my wife's 39th birthday and uh, it was raining. So I was looking around getting some tchotchkes for the kids, right? Little toys and trinkets and Eiffel Tower necklaces for my daughter. And there was a Ferrari store there. And I was like, all right. And before I, I try to claim this is a Ferrari... Um, brand, you know what I mean, like the official Ferrari store selling Ferrari branded merchandise stuff, but not cars, except I saw this, which was the Ferrari FXXK, and it was like, wow, it looks pretty good, it looks nice, and I said, I'm going to score that for my kid, and then I looked, and it was like, the, the models were between 150 and 200, now I've got a bunch of these for my son, but I don't remember how much they cost, but I do remember this is like a limited one and it's like, oh, like the details are there. It's not just, let's just say it's nice to me. If you told me it was a hundred or $125, I would say, sure. Sounds about right. Let me pay for it. This was 199 euros, which translates over to $240 roughly. And I was like, all right, if it's limited, my kid's going to probably break it anyway, but I'll give it to him. He's turning 10. Uh, he'll appreciate it. It's one of his favorite Ferraris, the FXXK and uh, all will be well in the world. Then I left the store, I'm like, I wonder how much those things are like online, right? On, on Amazon. So I go and I'm like, this can't be. It's like 49 bucks. I was like, oh, come on, 49 shipped to my door. It'll get home before I get home. And I was like, that sucks. And then I'm like, well, you know what? Let me, let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Because remember, this is like the limited, this is the, uh, what is it? The, um, the signature series. Let me, let me, I'm going to step. Ferrari Signature Series. But Signature Series just means it's still a toy and those sell for $70 on Amazon. And I was like, ah. So, and just to be sure, Amazon's got a thing where you can push a little scanner. I scanned the box, the tag, and it was 70 bucks. And I was like, all right, you know what? I don't mind overpaying for something, right? Like, but, like, you don't want to pay triple. Like, like, Something that's seventy dollars shipped to my door, and I'm paying two hundred and forty. Means I can get like three and a half of these for the same price, and it's the same exact thing. It's I'm a value guy that hurt, so I tried to bring it back the next day, and I'm like, hey, you know, I Facetime my kid, and he already has this one. And when you get ripped off, you know the uh, the response is going to be consistent. Oh, sorry, no returns. You can swap it for something else, and I'm like, oh, nah. like no, nah, I don't know what he's got. He's sleeping right now. He really wants a Bugatti. You clearly don't sell Bugattis. So uh, just you can give me my money back. No, 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 not possible. It's like, oh, they got me. And then like, and I'm like, you know, maybe I'll buy him this Ferrari backpack. How much? 
300 euros, so another 100 euros. I'm like, I'm not giving you any more money. Like, like if you could do that backpack, which you also look up is like 40 bucks online, I'll give you the, the 200 euros for the backpack. And no, no, I can, take, I can do 285. And I'm like, really, you're taking 20 euros off your backpack? I was like, I'll find somebody else to give this car to. Of course, I'm going to give it to my child and just hate myself that I spent triple, triple what, what it costs. Now, what did we learn from this? One, if you're going to buy something, it's good to just price check it, because especially if you're buying something in the moment, there's something nice about like buying a trinket, like uh, buying something like buying uh, macaroons in, in France and bringing them back, but not at 5x the cost if it's the same freaking thing. And, and it's different if like something is made in France and it tastes better in France or something like that. You want to bring it back for the experience. But this is a toy car, which is probably made in China, which is sold all around the world, which I just didn't do my research before. I just said, yeah, whatever. 200 euros, you got it. I, I like my kid 200 euros worth and I wasted my money. And it points out that tourists are easily susceptible because you're out there to spend money. You're easily susceptible to overpaying for things. And that also points out what the most profitable exotic car rental business model is, which is also in Paris. Now, that, that allow, allow that long intro into the most profitable exotic car rental business model. Here we go. So it's similar to what I did, right? I, I did something called the Dream Car Sprint. And the Dream Car Sprint was an autocross, which allowed you to get behind the wheel and do three laps around an autocross track and a Ferrari or Lamborghini, it didn't really matter which Ferrari or Lamborghini, for $99. So that worked with volume. It doesn't work. One person can't come up to me and say, I want to do an autocross because we have all the staff, we have the trailers, you have to rent the parking lot, which believe it or not, parking lots are anywhere between like $1,500 and like $4,000 a day, some, some even more. But like, that's a lot of money. So that's overhead. So you, if I rent a parking lot for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I could be spending twelve to fifteen thousand dollars just to rent the parking lot. Then I've got the cars. Then Autocross has tires, like lots of tires, lots of brakes, a lot of wear items. You have all the staff. You've got the setup. You got to go line the course with the cones. You've got like there's so much involved in that. That yes, the return is good, right? Like you can take one car. And just, you have a line of customers. Anytime you have a line of customers for anything, you're in good shape. But it also required a line of customers to be profitable. So on days when, like, as the cycle of this event wound down, we just didn't have as much demand. So I was like, all right, just close it down. Cause like, like, I don't want to run this event if I'm going to cancel dates and switch. And this person's getting it as a gift and somebody gave it to them and now you switch the date on them and they're like all panicky and it's not worth the customer service for the hundred bucks. But when we were doing it, we were generating, I probably want to say between eight and $12 million. I, I don't remember how many years we were doing it, but like eight and $12 million off of just say a fleet size of anywhere between 500 and 1.2 million at the time. I was doing three separate sprint events in three separate locations, right? Three cookie cutter uh, events happening at the same time. Now that I'm saying is probably the best business model you can have, but there's a lot of wear and tear. The cars are like worthless when you go to sell them after this. The, the amount of asses that get in each seat, the touch surfaces, everything sort of goes to crap on those cars. But then there's the Paris space where they've got the second, or probably the most profitable um, exotic car rental business model possible. And that's these guys standing on the street corner in a touristy area saying, do you want to drive the Ferrari uh, for 99, 99 euros? It's 120 bucks, but uh, 99 euros. And you can go here and you can get in the car with these guys and they've got, I don't know, they could just have the cars garaged at their house. They could have them wherever. And they've got a couple of cars and then they just like let the tourists get in. They drive around like the Eiffel Tower. Now, if you're familiar with Paris, like the, the, the popular spots right there, like the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, um, uh, Palace Vendome. Uh, I'm saying all this wrong because I'm American, so sorry. Uh, but like it's you're just sort of doing the loop of the Eiffel Tower for the most part, maybe doing two or three miles on the car and giving them 120 bucks. So you think about that. There's no, it doesn't have any of the big overhead. You're not, you're not renting a commercial space. You're not... Um, you're not renting a parking lot. You, you don't have all the staff, the trailers, the trucks. You can literally drive the car to the street corner. You get out and you're like, hey, you want to drive my car? And you can then generate your business that way. Now, does it generate the same top line revenue? I don't know. 
but the amount of money that they make off of, and these were just Ferrari Californias, the amount of money that you make off of old cars per mile, I mean, you're doing $40 per mile comparatively with no wear and tear because you're just going around in traffic. Like you drive around the, the Eiffel Tower, you're not going anywhere fast and you're, you're in there just for the like experience. Like I'm driving a Ferrari, this is super cool. So their overhead is significantly low. The amount of money they generate per unit uh, on the net side, I mean, on the gross side is disgusting because, and I don't know what it's used for outside of that, but the per mile, if I'm renting a, that same California for a day, it's a thousand bucks and they get a hundred miles and I can only do one of them per 24 hour period. So I'm, I'm limited to like 18 days a month. If I get 18 individual rentals sort of stacked up, these guys can do just say 25 to 40 people a day at 10 minutes each, uh, if not more on, on a crazy day. And they're generating three, four, five times the revenue I am off of the same car. And even more per mile. Their per mile is like $40 a mile or minus $10 a mile on the same car. So like this can work in the US too. But it's, it's really designed for the guy that thinks he's got to get into the business and, and do something crazy. You can go to the lower end. You can go camp yourself out in Times Square. I don't know how feasible it is in Times Square, but like the Vegas Strip. You've got Times Square. You've got the, the Ocean Boulevard in Miami. And you just have to come up with a loop that like go down the ocean, make a right on 5th, come back up Washington, and like you just cycle back. It, it, Paris lets this happen, and, and I have seen these guys in different places. So I don't know if they're allowed to be in these spots or they just jump there till the cops just uh, shush them away or they're just not there long enough to, to end up causing a thing. There's nothing, like, nothing illegal about standing on a street corner for a half hour. So I can only imagine how much these guys are making doing this. It's a great business model. You're taking, and, and there's indiscriminate use. Like nobody cares. Like, oh, you know, for my, for my hundred euro, like, if it was an FXXK, I, I'd totally give you my 100 euro, but since it's just a California, I'm not interested. There's guys that are never gonna drive a Ferrari in their life, never even dream of, of owning one. But the fact that they could drive it for 100 bucks, just write that check all day long. So that is the single, if you're ever wondering what the single most profitable business model is with the least amount of risk, it's that. Uh, it's taking place in Paris. Sorry about my complaining about me getting burned on this FXXK, but I'm sure my kid's going to love it anyway. And, and I'm always going to look at it and be like, that's 250 bucks right there. Shouldn't be. But Rob Ferretti getting ripped off in Paris buying Ferraris and uh, telling you the most profitable biz business model for renting exotic cars because it doesn't work everywhere, but it's going to be the cheapest foot in the door as far as starting a business as can be. Because you can be a one guy shop, you park the car at your house, they throw stickers on the side of it, so everybody knows that that's a rental Ferrari that they can get in and drive for $99. And when you're in the car, you don't really care, you just wanna spend the money. So it's a one man operation, lowest amount of overhead, one used car, and you can get yourself in the business. Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching. If you were wondering, now you know, that's the cheapest way to get into renting exotic cars. And it's also the single most profitable uh, per mile that exists. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.